How you doing guys, how are things? So as promised we're back here today testing another knife. Now this is a, a, a big departure for Eagle Ridge Survival is this. It's not what I would consider a survival knife. Uh, that said, a knife of this shape uh, back in the 80s probably would have been considered a survival knife. So what we have here, it is the SOG SEAL team. Now I don't know a lot about this knife. Um, I'm presuming it's a stainless steel and I guess it's something like an AUS 8A, that's that's what I'm guessing, okay? Um, just to give you an idea, everybody knows this knife, it's the US Marine Corps K-Bar knife, okay? Just to give you an idea of size, okay? They're of similar size, so of around the 7 inch blade, okay? It's a, a bit thicker than the uh, K-Bar knife, K-Bar is 1095 uh, carbon steel and it has a full tang with a slightly exposed pommel. The tang on the K-Bar is a lot thinner. Um, I personally wouldn't recommend flattening with the K-Bar, okay? The K-Bar, I suppose, is pretty much a dedicated fighting knife. That's what it is. So just using that to give you an analysis of it and a, and, uh, a comparison. So what we're gonna try and do with this, as you can see, it's a hollow ground, ground knife. Um, and I suppose almost 50% of it the first portion here is serrated. Now, I don't like serrations, okay? Because serrations um, are a problem regarding survival, in my opinion, especially where they are here, okay? So a large part of survival is trap building and notching, for me anyhow. And this is the portion of the blade that I use for that, okay? And it's very, very difficult to use uh, serrations for doing that. Now, I'm guessing I'm not a military guy, it's, it's SEAL team, I, I'm guessing this knife is for Navy SEALs or whatever and I can understand it's pretty much a fighting knife that can cut rope and uh, I suppose Navy SEALs are in the water and they're around chandlery a lot and stuff like that so there's a lot of rope cutting and that's what a serrated blade does excel at, okay? So first off, <clears throat> I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to do a bit of batting with it and this is what if you're getting into the larger seven inch kind of survival knife, this is the knife that, that I would be used to, okay? This is a Hablas Self-Reliance 2 SRT. This is a great knife, okay? Uh, 90 degree spine. This chamfered area here is designed particularly for striking a ferro rod. It has this anvil here for battening, and yet again another anvil here, and you know how I like to use uh, the exposed uh, pommel as a chisel. So I'm just going to do a bit of battening with this and then we'll see what it's like compared to the habits, okay? Now, one thing I will tell you about battening, and it's an experience that I've had over the years using serrated knives, and especially with a hollow ground. You don't want to get too heavy duty into timber battening through serrations. They wave very, very easily, okay? So if you have a serrated blade, just watch that. So <clears throat> we kind of have to treat this still now as a slightly smaller knife and we have to, to cut the pie, okay? So we're starting on the outside, just giving us enough tip there to get back in, back down through it, okay? And just work around it. Trying to keep those serrations out of it, okay? Because uh, that, that could be a problem. We don't want, to, it's not my knife. Uh, this knife was, was given to me to test by a friend of mine. He served his full time in the Irish Army and uh, I don't want to damage it. I will sharpen it up and give it back to him razor sharp. And thanks for giving us the use of this, Chris. Okay, so it does batten okay. I wonder if there is a version of this available without serrations. My thinking that would be a, a much better survival knife. Okay, so does handle uh, battening no problem. I'm just gonna batten a similar piece of timber here now with the habilis, okay? <clears throat> and what you'll notice with the habilis straight off, 
we can take a, 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 a good bit more of the timber, you know. Let's go find my baton. There we are. Okay, you can see with the Hablas, it certainly battens a hell of a lot better, doesn't it? So we're working our way around to a knotted area now here. And this anvil here, I, I, I just think it's a great idea, you know. Look at that. So it's interesting to see how far surviving lives have come as well. And uh, because certainly back in the 80s, any kind of combat type knife would have been considered a suitable survival knife. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try a bit of feathering with it. Now, we run into a problem here again with the with this serrations, okay? Because uh, serrations don't feather well, okay? So I have to choke up on that and I just have to be careful there because I have to use this portion to feather. And of course it will feather. Okay, no problem feathering, but if we go into the serrations, look, you just can't feather with serrations. It won't happen. Okay, so th th that's why I detest serrations on a knife, and I, I absolutely detest them. If they have to be somewhere on a knife, I'd rather that they were on the front portion, or, or the back of the blade, ideally. But uh, along here, this is the area. <coughs> if I was notching out now for a feather board, which I was, uh, for a fire board, which I was earlier on, you can see the pictures in it where we use this for uh, making it. It's not great with the serrations, so you have to, you have to be careful because you need to choke up here and make your way into the plain edge. So, it's, what is this knife good for? Well, I suppose the purpose of this knife, it is a combat knife. It's designed, I, my thinking is it's designed for a soldier that might have a little bit of utility and would definitely want to be cutting rope. And I suppose and uh, at that it excels. It's stainless steel, so anything that's got, if you're going to be around water, um, it probably would make a very good pig sticking knife as well. You know, it's, it's sharp, it's pointy, it's long. Uh, you have a good grip on it, okay? It's quite an aggressive grip. I don't think you'd, you'd lose lose grip of this or lose purchase of it uh, if your hands were wet or anything like that. It has a lanyard and uh, it, it does have an exposed pommel which you know I like that because you can effectively turn your knife into a chisel. It's very good for prying as well okay. I wouldn't pry heavy with the tip on this given that it's a hollow ground uh, uh, knife I, I, I would be iffy about that you know. Um, but look, it, it is what it is. It's a great knife. It's just that knives have progressed. Like this knife has a strong tip. Look, you, you just know this isn't going to give out on you, you know, because it's what it's designed for. Um, I think this could be a great utility. I don't know what this knife comes in at either. I don't know what kind of cost it is. But uh, it's definitely a great utility knife. And it's I can imagine it being a great soldier's knife as well. Okay, guys. Just thanks for tuning in. It's not our usual type of knife that we test. You know, we're kind of mostly about survival, survival type knives. <clears throat> and uh, I suppose it's a while since a knife like this has been considered a dedicated survival knife. Okay, it's a, it's a definitely a knife designed as a throwback to the 80s style survival knife. But uh, Chris, thanks a million for giving us this knife. It definitely is a solid bit of kit. Okay, without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, like I said, um, I think it's very fit for purpose. Okay, see you next time guys. Take care.